Here we have an iPad 10.5 that came in for repair. The tablet does not power on. Let's go ahead and plug the charging cable and see what's going on. We already removed the screen, so we have access to the board, and we also removed the shield that goes on top here, the black shield. Nothing else was done to the tablet. If we plug the charging cable, and we have a battery separator right here. We do not want power from the battery to hit the board. But if we remove it, I just want to see how much the tablet is charging. And if you look here, and you cannot see a thing, but if you look here, nothing is being drawn by the charging station. No voltage, no amperage, nothing. Screen is blank. If we use a good working tablet, the one that we fixed this morning, plug the charging cable, you see the tablet is charging 5 volts at 1.8 amps. Whereas the one we are working on right now, if we plug the charging cable, nothing. Nothing at all. That could be one of the two reasons. It could be a charging flex issue, or it could be the U2 TriStar chip issue, or maybe something else, who knows. What I'm going to do is use this test board that you can also purchase off our site. We have one for USB-C, one for the Lightning for Apple, and a micro USB connector to test micro USB devices. And they come in packs of three. So you buy three and you get one of each. So we have the board connected like this, and we're going to test the points on the board to try to figure out if we have a problem with the charging flex or with the TriStar IC. It could be something else, but those are the first things that come to mind when a tablet is not taking a charge. All right? Pin number eight is ground, so I have my meter in diode mode. I'm going to place red probe on 8, and we're going to measure the rest of the pins. From experience, I know that we should measure around 0 0.74 in diode mode on pin 2, pin 3, and those two pins here. Now, different tablets, different models may measure different numbers, but for the most part, they should be close. Pin number 8, ground, we're going to measure here. We have 0 0.743. 0 0.743, 0 0.747, and 0 0.741. Good. If we look at the middle pin, I'm not getting a reading, nothing. Number four, we have 0 0.814. So we have something going on with pin number five and pin number four. Pin number five is not reading anything, and pin number four is reading a high value of 0 0.814. It should not read anything. They should be vice versa. This one should not be reading, and this one should be reading. But it's not the case here. Right now, we eliminated the fact that we may have a short, and most likely our charge and flex cable is good. We're going to go for the TriStar chip, replace it, and see what happens. And the TriStar chip on iPad 10.5, of course, you do not have easy access. So we have to desolder that plate. This one here. And we have to be careful. When desoldering the plate, we do not want to burn the battery connector. And right now, we do not have the motherboard out of the housing. So we do not want to burn the battery as well. Maybe I should ask Big Boss to remove the board. You know what? I'm going to ask Big Boss to remove the board. I do not want to disturb and burn whatever we see here and the battery. Better safe than sorry. We will disassemble the board, and I can safely work on this board. Right now, the TriStar chip is under this plate, so we have to heat up the plate to remove it. We cannot just pop it open. We have to heat it up to liquefy solder on all edges, and the TriStar chip is closer to the battery. So if I want to replace it, apply heat here, we may end up burning this area here. We do not want that. I'll be back. All right, so Big Bus removed the motherboard right here and we're going to safely work on this board. Uh, my mother just put mangoes for me to eat. She said, take a break and have some. 
Right now we're gonna heat up this plate. From all sides. We have to be careful because we have the battery, it's plastic, and we also have the FEC connectors on the side here. So we have to be precise on where we point heat. Unless you want to do more work. The plate is out. And where is our TriStar chip? Right here. Right next to the battery connector. I thought the chip would be closer to the battery, but I was wrong. It's right here. So pin number one is on the bottom, bottom left, as I have the board oriented. You can link pin number one with this. So pin number one should be pointing to this little hole on the battery connector. Now we have a lot of glare, a lot of reflection from the flux. You already know what to do, right? Anti-glare light. Anti-glare light is very important. Very, very important. If you cannot see what you're working on, you're gonna do a bad job. And I'm talking to those who are in the same business or doing this as a hobby. You cannot see a single pad on the board. You see, if I block the light, we're able to see. And that's what the anti-glare light does. It points light from the sides, just like that. And then we can increase the brightness of the anti-glare light so we can see every pin or every pad on the board. I mean, compare anti-glare light to ring light. Big difference. If you have not already purchased an anti-glare light, just log in to northfishfix.com and you can buy one from there. Add to cart, check out, pay, and we will ship out your light the very next day or same day. It depends when you order. Is this tip okay? I guess. I just want to apply leaded solder. We do not want to bump into any components because those components are microscopic. If you bump into any one of them, you're going to knock them off the board. Now we're going to use a method I introduced a while back, maybe about two or three years ago, where we use a braid wick and hot tweezers. It was a trial and error thing, and it became something that I use every single day. Awesome. And if you notice, we did not tamper with any components, any neighboring components, because all those components are soldered with unleaded solder, which takes a lot more heat for solder to liquefy than leaded solder that we applied on the pads. That's one way of doing it, of course. There are many other ways to desolder solder from pads but that's the method that I use since I discovered hot tweezers and a braid wick. Let me go back 
to the ring light. We do not have a glare right now. So all we need to do is solder a new chip and hopefully that will fix the problem. And it looks like I'm out of the TriStar ICs. Let me grab some from inside. We do sell those ICs in case you need them. Yeah. Right, so let's apply a tiny bit of flux, just like that. And we're gonna grab a new TriStar chip. And I do not have the microscope view on. You cannot see how I'm soldering if you're looking at my face, so. So pin number one, we linked pin number one with the notch here. So let's flip, that way you'll never forget. So right now, anytime you open up an iPad 10.5, you link pin number one of the TriStar with this notch on the battery, unless the battery that you have does not have a notch. Very unlikely. Okay, so the chip made a connection and now we're gonna have to reflow. And when I say reflow, we're gonna apply heat. The chip settled in place. Very nice. I pushed it more than I should. Hopefully we did not disturb the balls under the chip. That chip is tiny. It looks big under the microscope, but it's tiny, really tiny. Here, I'll compare it with the penny. So the chip is the size of UN. United, UN. The chip is the size of two letters on a penny. Just look up a penny and try to read the letters. Two letters equal one chip. Nice. And we're done. As long as we did not disturb the balls under the chip, the tablet should work. If it does not work, I'm going to have to redo the chip. Maybe we disturb the balls under. When I push the chip too much, some of the solder balls under the chip may have gotten disturbed. I do not know. Probably not, but it's a possibility. We're going to reassemble the board and see if the tablet will work. Right, so I grabbed the iPad. Before we reassemble it, I want to test. What we're going to do is we're going to align the battery connector with the battery on the housing right here. And we're going to plug the cable and see if anything changed. Maybe we can plug the cable first. And now we're going to align the battery connector with the battery. And anything changed? That's the question. Yes. Yes, look at this. The tablet is charging at 5 volts, 1 amp. Right here. Okay, if we disconnect the battery from the board, it goes off right here. And if we align the battery with the connector again, it comes back on. The way I'm holding the connector, it may come on and off because we need to put the screw in. But right here, five volts, one amp. Done, fixed. Now I can give the tablet to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And we can invoice and mail this back to the customer. Big Boss is done with the reassembly of the iPad. He just hold up on me. Bismillah. Five volts, 2.5 amps. Yes. Done. The job is done. Thank you, big boss. Tablet is working. We're gonna invoice and mail this back to the customer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.